Okay, Travis here, Dyer's Dirt Bikes. So after 84 hard hours on these forks, fork tube seals are leaking. So I'm gonna try out these kind of overpriced SKF fork seals. Try those out. And then also we'll need one, two of those. All right, some specialty tools you'll need for these AER48 shocks or forks is this little guy, fork seal driver and fork seal installer definitely definitely recommend one of these they don't cost much uh both made from tusk so work fine if you don't have one of these big fucking crest wrench works too so i'm gonna start with the air chamber first gonna break this guy loose take this guy off open it up and drain all the oil hear it hissing on me so you don't really have to take that guy off to bleed out the air. You can if you want. The inner pressure rod for here. You also don't need to drain that out. It's really no point because what you're going to do is we're going to take it off from the bottom anyways. Drain all this out. Glug, 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 glug. Hey, it actually doesn't look too bad. I usually keep up on my uh, forks pretty good. I'll change the oil about every 30 hours or so. Next, we're going to clamp the bottom and loosen this guy. Once we have this all loose, our compression rod, our air rod, whatever the hell you want to call it, will be able to come out. Okay, now we got that guy out. That's a 19 millimeter. We're gonna loosen our fork tube back up. And of course I'm a one man show, so I'm gonna just screw this all up trying to record. There we go. All right, so now I slide this on down, pull this on out, come on. All right, so this is our air tube, put it away, somewhere nice and clean and sterile. Don't look at it too much. All right, so now drain out whatever remaining oils in there, which none, so it was a waste of time. All right. So now we're gonna do pop off our uh, dust seal. There's gonna be a snap ring inside, and then you're sure you've seen other people's videos. We're gonna slide hammer this guy apart and knock out that other inner fork seal. All right, so there's our dust seal. There's our snap ring. So let's see how well I can get this off one-handed. Come on. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Put that there, and there's our fork seal. And then here's the spacer, washer, and this is our slide bushing. So now's a good time to inspect this for any wear or any imperfections, which if there is, you wanna replace it. Uh, like I said, I really kept up on these fork tubes, so there's like no wear. They still look great. So take this guy off, this off, that off, slide that off and reverse the order, put these all back together. Okay, so now we took everything off. We grabbed our little bullet ding, put that on there, of course take that off. Put that on there, slide them all down. Um, everyone's gonna have a different opinion on what to lube up your fork seals with. I've always just used fork oil, having any problems, so that's my two cents. You can't go wrong with any method. So we got dust seal, snap ring make sure to clean your snap ring if it's all dirty like mine uh that's just rust but there was some dirt on there so i cleaned it fork seal washer little spacer and then of course our bushing up here and then also make sure you clean inside the gallery inside here where the snap ring goes you can see i missed a little bit but i'm not gonna sweat it too much so it's clean got that all up so now i'm gonna put this back on the tube and then I'm gonna use my fork seal uh, tool, driver, thingamajig, and press this all back in there. Okay, now I got my lovely wife to help me out. So here's the fork seal driver tool. Now when you tap it, you're gonna tap it and keep banging on it until you hear it either wanna bounce, feel it bounce back or you'll hear it hit bottom. There, that sharp noise, that's what you wanna hear. Okay, so a quick tip. If you're not sure if that snap ring is fully seated, 
You can take your drive tool, just give it a nice little light tap all the way around. If it doesn't move, you're good to go. Another way you can check is you see that gap between the lip of the seal and your snap ring itself. You wanna make sure it's even all the way around. So that's another way you can check. Okay, so now we got the fork seal in. That you can just push down your hands. Now we'll put in our pressure rod, if you wanna call it. Back in the good old days, this was your damping rod with a spring and all that, but uh, these there are air forks. So, and you notice how this is a hex shape. So when you put this back down into your fork tube, you wanna give it a rotation to make sure it goes indexed into there. Yeah, right there you can kind of see the slots. And then we will tighten it back up with this. Uh, there is a torque spec out there, but you know, just tight. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. Just keep in mind, it's aluminum threads going into, actually this may be metal. I'll check that later. And then O-ring, spec the O-ring. If it looks good, you can roll with it. If it makes you sleep better at night, replace it. Okay, so we got that all tight. What I did, is to, I just pelt it right here while you get your wrench, tighten it up. Um, speaking of which, this guy actually made it through the Paradise Campfire. It's one of my snap-on extensions. You know, kind of cool. So it looks like afterwards. All right, and then you'll pull this tube down, add your fork oil. Uh, you look up what the book calls for on your forks. I have Race Tech gold valves in these. So my fluid level will be different than yours. Okay, so we got the compression side of the fork done. Now we're gonna do the damping rod side. So, uh, loosen out your clickers with your flathead. And then we're gonna loosen up the clickers up here on our compression. And then to make your life easier, we're gonna crack this loose and in here loose. That's where this little Motion Pro tool comes in. Put it right there and break that loose. Um, if you're not the most skilled with your hands, definitely put a lot of downward pressure because you know, you can walk this thing out and bugger that all up. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so to keep this video short, because that's kind of my whole that's kind of the whole reason why I'm moving so fast in this video. I'm just doing a simple, straightforward video on how to do these. So breaking these guys loose on the damping rod tube is the exact same as the one I just got done showing you. So I'm not gonna bother with showing you that. Same with loosening this out. You drain the oil in here and installing the fork seals are gonna be the same. But what I will show you is once I get the damping rod out, how to drain and bleed that guy out. Okay, so here's our damping rod. And this is why I said to crack this top part loose and this guy loose. Cause now, again, one-handed until I hire a cameraman. I'm gonna loosen up this guy. Ah, see what I mean? Oh, there we go. All right, so that popped out. So now we're gonna do, again, see if I can just one-handed. There we go. Pry this guy out. A little bit of suction. Ah, there she goes. All right, take it over here while it's draining. See, there's my gold valve, my Race Tech gold valve. Uh, I do have another video of a review on this guy. Install of these Race Tech gold valves is fairly in depth, uh, mainly lots of measuring and shim stacking and directions are very vague. Um, I do like the gold valves. I don't regret putting them in because I was able to put them in myself. But then again, I'm also a professional mechanic. I tinker with stuff for a living. So doing this wasn't that big of a deal for me. Um, is it worth the money? Eh, not, not, not a whole lot, honestly. Spend time adjusting your clickers or you talk to someone like Joe at CCS of, hey, my forks feel a little off, wrong, stiff, soft, whatever. He can help guide you on proper setup and you really don't need to spend the money on these. The money you could spend on these, you could spend on, uh, hell, just knowledge, proper valving or your stock valve. But if you want that cool race tech sticker, sure, go for it. So got that out. Now we're gonna do Unclamp this. Let me see if it's one handed. Ah, there we go. All right, drain this stuff out. Because on the Race Tech gold valves, uh, it's not just that one valve. You actually also have to take apart this dampening rod. And the other gold valve is way down in there. You can almost see the gold a little bit. 
So we're gonna drain that out. Now, I'm used to doing show wash shocks where you will fill this guy all the way up and you'll, you know, bleed out the air. These shocks aren't like that, these damping rods. You actually have to fill them up to a spec, then bleed out the air and then put in that cap back in. Okay, so on my particular bike, it calls for 380 milliliters or 380 cc's. Um, so you actually only need one quart, guys, to do the job of both forks, inner, actually, yeah, about one quart is really all you need to do inner and outer uh, chambers and rods. So we're gonna do, fill this guy up, try not to spill any. And then I'll show you next. Oh, I forgot to mention guys, when you pour out the oil of this damping rod, you want to stroke that shaft to get out all that extra oil. So I'm gonna fill this back up in here. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, so now we're gonna do, let it finish dribbling, is we're gonna put this, or uh, stroke it up and down get them bubbles out. Again, this is not like a show wash shot, guys. That's where I made my mistake. See, there it went, burped. So we're gonna do that a few times. Once that's all nice and bled, you're not getting any more air bubbles out, in the, out of it. You'll simply push this guy back in and press on it while you're turning. Be careful not to cross thread that up. And then, like I said, this damping rod will go back into here the same way as the other um, air tube did. And yeah, so there's a quick, easy version of forked seals on this bike. These um, brand, oh, let me get in the trash. SKF uh, seals, they actually do seem like fairly good quality. Uh, I talked to Joe at CCS, he did, he did also like using these as well. So I'll try them out.